Hey, how's it going? So I was already had like my Liquid Barn wrap up video shot. Uh, it was terrible, but I had it shot. But then they went ahead and came out with a couple new holiday flavors. They sent them to me. So I pulled it a couple days. We're going to go over their brand new eggnog and their cranberry cobbler. And then I'll do the usual kind of wrap up stuff that I was looking at. So I obviously lied about this being the last disclaimer. They sent me new stuff. So again, I got to say it. I don't pay for nothing. So thank you, Liquid Barn. Uh, so I just got these in on, I want to say like Monday or something like that. So I usually try to give these a longer steep before I test them. But I figured, you know their seasonal flavors i don't necessarily have time to let them sit around for three weeks so these are my kind of like half-assed slapdash impressions of them um, but i have been vaping quite a bit of them i think i've probably gone through at least 15 20 milliliters of each since monday uh so you know hopefully these opinions end up being at least vaguely helpful first i have their eggnog it kind of tastes like eggnog uh, I feel like the actual, like, nog base here suffers from some of the same issues that their other creams do, namely that there's a sort of heavier, at, at, definitely in terms of mouthfeel, like that kind of, like, heavy base, um, but they feel a little bit underflavored in general, and I don't think this is really much of an exception. There is just a little bit of egginess in here. Um, and you do get some sort of like richer notes than maybe their straight ahead cream. But again, you're looking at a very bottom heavy cream flavor and the, the middle of this flavor, there just isn't much actual cream taste to it. So in the description for this, Liquid Barn calls out the addition of cinnamon and bourbon. I don't know if that's what I would have guessed if you hadn't told me that's what's in here. Um, for the bourbon, there isn't really any kind of like booziness or funkiness from the bourbon. Instead, I get maybe just a little bit of oak. And together with that cinnamon, the, the end effect is a whole lot like nutmeg, which is sort of a pleasant surprise. It's not overwhelming though, and that's the entire thing. I think one of my biggest issues with this flavor is just how soft and muted the entire thing is you know you do get a little bit of spice to it you do get maybe just a little bit of oak but the entire sort of body of this really feels under flavored um i'm not sure if it's like some component of the actual nog part or the bourbon part but it's also a little tangy which is sort of disconcerting and because that that uh cream base is so sort of thin in the middle range where most of the flavor will usually be sitting. It just tastes a little bit like citric, um, which is strange. You know, my first couple times vaping this on not clean coils, which, you know, I went back and vaped on clean coils because I'm not an animal. Uh, but the only thing that really came through was like that kind of like light citrus tartness and some nutmeg. Uh, so it, I don't know. Um, you could try to fill this in, I guess. You know, it could definitely use some additional cream um, or something to kind of fill in that metal end, like some FA fresh cream or something like that. Uh, but, you know, honestly, it's, I think it's intended more to be a one shot. And if you're already putting cream in, you might as well throw some custard in, throw your own bourbon in, throw your own spices in and stuff. You know, like I realize that I'm not the intended market for this per se, but it isn't really particularly satisfying as a single flavor. Liquid Barn suggests mixing it 12% with it. And honestly, it feels a little bit too light there. Um, it feels like it really needs a couple more percentage to, to get going. I did kind of bump this up to somewhere closer to actually like 20%. And at 20%, this is actually a little bit better, but that's about as high as I want to take any flavor, you know? So, I mean, ultimately, I, I would probably be a pass on this one. Um, I feel like... It just needs to be cranked up. You know, you need more bright, uh, you need more saturation from it. You need like a heavier spice note, which is weird saying you need a heavier spice note in something vape related because it's almost always the opposite problem. But, and um, you definitely need a little bit more bourbon in here, you know? Like I want my eggnog extra noggy and uh, with, with a sort of heavy punch to it. And this doesn't really do that for me. Next, I have their cranberry cobbler. I liked this one quite a bit more actually and I was super excited opening it up because opening it up like you actually smell that there's some AP in here and that's kind of been one of my issues with sort of the liquid barn bakeries in general so they don't have much in the way of texture I feel like this is actually probably the most textured in terms of like a bakery flavor that I've had from liquid barn so far uh, that cobbler base is actually you know surprisingly good um, it has a I don't know it 
feels a lot to me like uh, Serial 27. That kind of like slightly softer AP note, it definitely has that going on. There's some actual like crunch and texture there. There's also like a, like a light cinnamon kind of note to it. It's not overwhelming or anything, but there's just like a little bit of bakery cinnamon that kind of adds a little bit of warmth here. Um, it, overall, I mean, it's a very competent cobbler base, actually. I was really excited uh, after trying this. I've been messing around with Flavor West Wildberry Cobbler forever, trying to fill out like the, the cobbler part of that. And honestly, this tastes a lot like what I did with some Inaware Biscuit and some Capella Cereal 27 to kind of fill out that cobbler note there. Uh, so I'm psyched on the cobbler part of this. I get that it's seasonal, but I'm not sure like cranberry was absolutely the best choice to go for for the fruit here. Um, thankfully, it doesn't taste too much like cranberries. Uh, it's kind of a generic sort of red berry kind of taste. Um, it's actually fairly subtle as far as those things go, you know, like it's not intensely fruity or overwhelming. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit light and maybe even a little bit floral uh, compared to like a darker, juicier, jammier fruit that you'd actually want up against a cobbler. They say cranberry, this is, I mean, I would just call it like more of like a tartar, like almost cran raspberry kind of flavor. Um, but you know, it's, it's competent. It just, for how good that cobbler base is, I was hoping for like a deeper, fuller fruit. Liquid Barn suggests mixing with this at 12% again. Um, and again, I feel like maybe they kind of undershot that one. I don't know. Um, I like this a lot more at like 15%. I feel like that cobbler base really does come together. I think any higher though, and that fruit does start to get a little bit floral on me. Uh, in terms of where you'd use this, I mean, it's a pretty good cobbler base, you know? And I think there's a lot of like fruit additions that would actually play really well in here. Uh, the obvious one would be like a darker syrupy kind of berry, you know, flavorless blackberry, flavora boysenberry, um, the perellium boysenberry or boysenberry reserves. Uh, preserves sorry <laughs> uh those those would all work really well to kind of fill in this flavor a little bit more give you a little bit more of a fruit edge uh, i'd say that it was like taylor built for flavor west's uh, wild berry cobbler but that has a little bit of floral edge to the fruit too and i don't necessarily see combining the two although that does kind of like sink my dreams of making like a 25 percent flavor mix so you know that's a shame but outside of just adding more berries in here i think a flavor's apple filling would be pretty pretty good here you basically just want like some sort of like sweeter juicier like richer jammy fruit to pair off against it uh, but as it stands i mean this is actually a pretty good solo flavor so you know i'm i'm digging this one so full service right uh so there's the entire liquid barn line um so overall this has been like a really interesting experience for me i know i've talked about it a couple other places but liquid barn hasn't really ever been in my wheelhouse because a lot of the way it works isn't necessarily my mixing style. You know, I like weird flavors. I like strong flavors. I like 0.25% of something as an accent on top of three other things, just because I kind of like to play around with DIY sort of for the, the form of it. You know, like I actually enjoy the, the craft of DIY more than I'm worried about getting something vapable at the end of the day. Uh, what I do feel like Liquid Barn does really well though is they focus on that kind of user experience um, where you're going to have a user base that are more concerned about just getting something vapable at the end of the day and making it, you know, easier. Uh, so that accessibility factor with Liquid Barn is absolutely huge and I absolutely love the way that they tackle it. They have their tastemaker kits, which are great. Uh, you don't need a scale, syringes, any of that other crap. You just get a bottle, flavor, and like even like a little ruler thing to actually measure it out. So you don't even have to worry about, you know, actually measuring anything. And you can sort of rag on the strength of these flavors and they're all definitely weaker flavors. But one of the things that that lets you do is sort of present it in that manner that if you're supposed to mix 10% and you end up with 9% or you end up with 11%, not gonna completely destroy the entire recipe. And I do really appreciate that level of accessibility. I'd even go so far as to say that that idea sort of extends to their branding. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm not any kind of qualified design critic. I mean, just look at all this. 
But I do really like their branding, and I like how easy and sort of light and accessible all of it is. Uh, the fact that they have suggested percentages on their bottle, absolutely huge. You know, I like the fact that on their original bottles, they use, you know, big type, and they differentiate stuff with, you know, different colors, and it's all just a very uniform, very professional-looking package. And so when you hand it to somebody who is just getting a mixing for the first time, their first thought isn't going to be, hey, this this looks janky as fuck. This bottle is halfway faded and there's a bunch of small print on it and all this other stuff. And, you know, you've got bottles from four different companies. Uh, they just present a really nice sort of visually appealing product and that accessibility ends up going even, you know, further to sort of shepherd people into mixing. And that is a huge, huge service, you know. Um, Liquid Barn does a really good job of sort of capturing those, those new users. And when I was going over and doing all the flavor reviews for them, uh, they do have reviews on their website. And the entire thing is those are all, those reviews are almost useless. Um, just like a whole bunch of five stars saying, hey, this is great, this is great, this is great. And I, you know, it's awful if you're trying to like glean useful information about the flavors, but what it does show is that they are managing to sort of capture those new mixers and sort of hold them in and do a really good job of walking them through the mixing process and sort of familiarizing them with it. And, you know, as wanky as that sounds, I guess, that's really cool. You know, I like DIY. I like vaping in general. You know, I think it's a good thing. And anything that a company is doing to attractively market and simplify the DIY process so people can afford to keep vaping, that is awesome. And I really do appreciate that. But some of my actual like complaints about Liquid Barn sort of stem from the flip side of that coin because, you know, myself and I'm assuming anybody else who is actually watching this um, has sort of already went down that rabbit hole, you know, and we're used to mixing our own juices from scratch. And Liquid Barn doesn't have as much to offer for a person who's already comfortable with mixing as it does for like your new or novice mixer. But on the whole, I just feel like these aren't necessarily flavors that are meant to be really screwed with, really tinkered with, really got down and dirty with, you know? I think the stuff that they do better tends to be their sort of one-shot-ish stuff, and there's some definite stand standouts there, but you end up, you know, in... Like, I'm not sure what to do with a lot of them. Like, okay, this is perfectly pleasant, and, you know, if I wanted to teach my aunt how to mix, I would point her towards Liquid Barn, and that's great, but it doesn't really address sort of the more niche... DIY enthusiast market all that well. Another big issue for me is sort of the, the value proposition once you do get down into that like DIY enthusiast level. Um, there's no doubt that mixing your own juice from Liquid Barn is going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than buying even shitty store brand e-juice. Um, it's just hard to argue with that value proposition there. But then you get down to the point where you're actually buying the flavors and while they're not outrageously priced at least per milliliter they are fairly weak uh, and so you run into a situation where you could use like two percent of flavor art something or you could use ten percent of liquid barns and it just doesn't really pencil out in terms of the value the other issue with sort of the concentration is that it gets really hard to use, like if you do want to go ahead and use them in mixes, it gets really hard to A, sort of maintain your PG to VG ratio because while they are good enough to actually provide you with that up front, you know, they're open about that. They give you the specific gravity. Um, it's all over the place, you know? So if you're really a stickler for hitting your PG-VG ratios, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to actually build recipes around that, especially with multiple liquid barn ingredients. Uh, there's probably gonna have to be like some sort of spreadsheet and math and some super advanced AI because honestly, I'm kind of dumb and it was just entirely above my head. And then finally, um, you know, for all of the great marketing and the outreach and the branding, and how sound this concept is, I do wish that the flavors were maybe just a little bit more vibrant. Uh, a lot of their stuff that is less complex, like their fruits and stuff, they're just not really particularly bright, vibrant flavors. And I think if you're already committing to mixing in that one-shot kind of style, just generalizing here, I guess. Um, but if you're looking at that new mixer kind of base, you just want big, bright, 
flavors, you know. And so I feel like they could crank the vibrancy up. Um, like I said, I'm not quite sure what's going on with most of their fruits, you know. They're really soft. They're really subtle for something that's marketed towards beginners. Uh, their creams, I'm, you know, it may just be me having a huge issue with it. But while I like the fact that they aren't afraid of using some uh, acetone and, and acetyl propanol to actually make them richer, uh, they don't really come across as richer overall flavors. They have really heavy bases and they have some good mouthfeel, but the middle of their creams just tends to be kind of hollow, um, which is kind of a letdown. I also think that they're missing a huge opportunity with those tobacco flavors uh, because there are going to be new vapors who are like, oh yeah, no, I'll pick up the tobacco flavor. And then I'm assuming what they want is they want like an actual like bold, robust kind of one shot tobacco, you know? And so I'd like to see a lot bigger, brighter, more saturated flavors and sort of, if they're going to have that focus on the newer mixer, just crank the volume up, you know, give people what they want. It's a lot easier to have something that's bright and oversaturated at 15% and tell them to crank it down than giving them something that's a little bit subtle at 10% and tell them to crank it up. But going over the entire thing, I do have some favorites out of the line. I just wanted to point them out. Um, so my first favorites are going to be like my one shot favorites, you know, like the stuff that I suggest for that beginner mixer, uh, that person who wants to use it as more of a like one shot base. I did really like their cappuccino. Um, kind of in love with that one. Actually, it's surprisingly solid. And for somebody who wants, you know, a coffee vape, um, that doesn't have that like heavy burnt popcorn kind of note that a lot of the more intense coffee concentrates have. Um, I'd go for the cappuccino, you know, it has a good mix of like, chocolate and coffee and cream it's just all very satisfying it's a very solid single flavor vape this is a season and all but their white chocolate peppermint caught some hype pretty solid overall you know it's a really really good one shot flavor especially at maybe a little bit less than that 12 percent at like eight percent yeah that's a really solid one shot and there are plenty of people that are happy just vaping stuff like that and i think it's really well done i actually like their baker's touch quite a bit and you know i stand by my whole spicy yellow cake description um but honestly a lot of times you don't need anything more complicated than that and you know i like the i like the sort of complexity there i like the contrast i think it's put together really well i think it's another good like sort of no-brainer high percentage single flavor mix for somebody who kind of likes bakeries and while it's not exactly rocket science it's spearmint and vanilla i do have to give a shout out to the vanilla mint because i have gone through a ton of it so far just vaping it solo i mean that just speaks to me on some level in terms of some flavors that you might want to look at picking up if you're more of an enthusiast mixer i do think their vanilla ice cream it's definitely worth taking a look at especially if you're a tpa vbic black pepper taster um it's pretty solid it could use a little bit of help in the middle but you know i didn't get much in the way of black pepper out of it and even better it's on bull city already so you know just go ahead and throw some in your cart if, if you're interested i think it's definitely worth experimenting with your blue raspberry i think is pretty good um i think it's more of a sort of candy raspberry than necessarily just a blue raspberry but you know i think it's fairly versatile again it's going to be a little bit thin but it does a pretty good job of tackling a profile that almost nobody does all that well well it's not my favorite thing in the entire world uh i do think their pink lemonade is going to be a really interesting concentrate to mess around with if you're into that kind of profile it's very sweet it's very pink it's going to be really good in like candy applications beverages stuff like that i think and lastly their baked cinnamon roll which doesn't taste anything like an actual cinnamon roll to me it just mostly tastes baked and it has like a raisiny cinnamon to it and i've been messing around with that with uh, tobaccos quite a bit and i've actually been really appreciating the results so you know if a warm raisiny cinnamon is interesting to you uh their baked cinnamon roll is definitely good so yeah that was liquid barn again huge shout out to them for sending this to me huge shout out to y'all for sticking with me while i go through some of these flavors even though you know, it's kind of been more of a learning experience and an actual information gathering experience for me, but it's been really interesting to, I guess, see how the other half vapes, um, if that doesn't sound ridiculously condescending. But it's been fun, and I've learned quite a bit. I hope you've learned a little bit, too. That's cool. Um, we'll go ahead and assume that happened. But yeah, next steps. Um, so we do have Christmas coming up, so I've just given everybody a heads up. I'm going to be gone for like two weeks around Christmas. So I'm sorry, you know, it's just going to happen. Um, but, uh, before then I do have a couple things planned. I've been testing some flavor evolution flavors. I picked up some more nicotine river flavors, which should be interesting to go over. Uh, I've been trying to write up notes for apricots forever. So expect that in the next couple days. I've also been testing mango flavors. Um, so I'm still working on notes for that. It, 
I don't know. There's a lot of mangoes, man. I don't know. But we'll get it done. Uh, but I did want to go ahead and give a very actually sincere thank you to people for continuing to watch this, continuing to subscribe. Like, that's crazy. I just open up my actual Chrome browser and it just tells me like five more people subscribe and I'm still scratching my head because y'all are watching me. But, you know, that's cool. I definitely appreciate it. Figure we'll have to actually get together something fun next time we hit like 500 or 600 subscribers, something like that. I know I have a feeling I have to order more garbage flavors, so that's going to be entertaining. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I do hope this was helpful. Um, I really do appreciate it. I'll catch you later.